So, you know, like Twitter path, like super hyper growth. Um, I joined path just south of 500 people. So within the first like 500, I mean, sorry, Twitter, within the first uh, 500 employees at Twitter. And, um, you know, we were on a, a, a rapid like hyper growth trajectory. Uh, the challenges there were really around scale, right? Um, the technical challenges were infinite because uh, we were in, you know, like Twitter's optimized for like this real time stream of tweets and like the feed has to be, has to like work, right? And at the time, um, we would experience these spikes in, in volume and traffic that uh, we like literally would not have predicted or couldn't have predicted because they were based on things that were happening in the world that couldn't be predicted, like an earthquake, like a tsunami, like an upwarring in, um, in Egypt. You know, that was one of the experiences where we experienced a, a, a spike in volume and um, we literally just could not scale um, our systems, our back-end systems, like our servers were burning. Uh, and so that was a type of child where they were pure technical um, and, and like really understand how you, how you grow. And then on the, on the people side of the business, the challenges were related to um, how do you maintain a culture? How do you establish cultural values and norms given the fact that you're hiring 30, 30 to 40 people a week and then eventually hiring 100 people a week, right? Like literally 100 new, like you're like, you know, adding 20% of your workforce in like a day. <laughs> um, and so how do you ensure that like cultural norms and values? And how do you do that? What did you learn? Um, so, you know, like we, we set up um, a set of core values and it was really around like teaching and enforcing. Um, and, and by enforcing, we mean like having it be a part of the conversation um, of our values. Like I, like I can recite the Twitter values still and I haven't worked there in several years. Um, and you know, in, in like conversations and meetings, we would talk about the values and we would make decisions, um, product decisions based on our value, right? So one, of, one cor cor corporate value at Twitter was um, to reach every person on the planet, right? And so if we were having conversations and there's a trade-off between like doing something that required um, scale and doing something that was a better, like from a product feature perspective, we were making the decision based on scale because we were like, we have to reach every person on the planet. Um, and so that's, so that's different than a company like Yahoo where, um, you know, established company, been around for 20 years and uh, 12,000 employees, already big, already very mature. Um, the challenge at a company like Yahoo that is a, in a turnaround um, situation is really like, how, on the people side is how do you, um, how do you change a culture? So someone who is, um, you know, you a, fire them. <laughs> <laughs> That's easier easier said than done. So, you know, like not everyone is. Uh, I mean, like you could have like an amazing team of people, but just aren't culturally aligned um, with like the direction of the company. And so like, and and it's not necessarily their fault, right? And so like the onus is on the leadership. Um, you know, and, and everyone is kind of positioned and empowered to be a leader in this way, but to change the dynamic and the culture of the team. I wanted to ask about how empowered you are because you work for someone who is notoriously hands-on and notoriously detail-oriented. So what has the experience been like working with Marissa and how much autonomy do you have in, for example, making decisions about changes to user experience and sure. some of the products you're working on? Sure. Uh, so right now I'm... Um, uh, so I'm on the Fantasy Sports. I'm a user growth for uh, Yahoo Fantasy and Sports uh, products. And um, <laughs> interestingly, uh, the it, 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 I'm, it's like the perfect intersection for me between my passion around sports and technology and user experiences. And so um, th my CEO Marissa is not as much of a sports fan as you might imagine. And so her <laughs> her feedback so on our products <laughs> is. <laughs> is a little bit different now that I'm on the, uh, the sports team than it was previously. Um, but, you know, I have a, a tremendous amount of respect for her. I think she's an incredible leader. Um, she is, has achieved amazing feats in such a short period of time um, at the helm of Yahoo. And for me, um, you know, her, her, the extent to which she's hands on is actually like only beneficial because. Um, you know, she's had such a wealth of experiences throughout her career uh, at Google, you know, one of these like iconic, the, potentially the most prolific company of my lifetime thus far. And uh, to be in a decision maker at that company for so long. I happen to know insider information. She was very instrumental in your recruiting to Yahoo. <laughs> 
Can you share a little bit of what she said to you that made you willing to jump into that situation? I think just, um, so just, uh, so she really described kind of her vision in the, in the future for Yahoo and like her thought process in making the decision um, to leave, you know, Google to, to run a company like Yahoo that was in the midst of a turnaround. Um, and I think kind of describing like what the future of this company could be, who, um, who she brought on board to lead, uh, the extent to which um, she really believed in the, in the product and like the core competencies of, of our company um, and where we could be differentiators in the space. And I think like once that vision um, became much clearer to me and then just kind of describing the opportunity, like for me to be at, um, you know, an iconic company in Silicon Valley um, working on a product that is, 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 you know, an amazing product. Like I was been a leader in fantasy sports since the beginning of fantasy sports. Um, and, and it's, a, you know, like a tremendous passion of mine. Those, um, you know, those are opportunities that I'm not sure I wouldn't have got, would have gotten anywhere else. But I think the biggest thing for me actually um, had less to do with what she actually said and more to do with who she is. And for me to work for a leader who has established um, credibility, who is a woman, who is technical, every bit um, the engineer and a technical brain is, is any of the brightest engineers in, in Silicon Valley, but also an expert in, in user um, experience and, a, and a, you know, very thoughtful thinker in terms of design. I think um, that opportunity to learn from someone like that to me was invaluable and is, um, is worth like its weight in gold.